Hello. Today we're going to have a look at this commission portrait I've just finished and it's a drawing of Brian Patrick Clark, the American actor. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the drawing and about drawing hair and highlights and things like that. I decided to use a combination of a graphite pencil and a black colored pencil to do this portrait. Normally I do a lot of the work with charcoal but this time I felt like using a graphite pencil a little bit more and also I found that this portrait, this particular portrait was probably more suitable for it. As for the blending I used brushes and q-tips and tortillions. So this combination of a graphite pencil and a black colored pencil is uh, nothing new. Uh, one of the YouTube artists who often uses that is Mark Rilly. And I believe he calls that the two pencil method because he normally works with a graphite pencil and then does some of the darker areas with a black colored pencil. You can use any graphite pencil or any black color pencil, the brands are not very important, but the, uh, the graphite pencil that I used was an HB Stadler graphite pencil, and the black color pencil was a Primo black, black color pencil. So you can see that I did uh, most of this here with a combination of these two pencils, and uh, then I added a little bit of value and blended it a little bit with a Q-tip and the brushes. The blending is important not just to um, add a little bit of value but also to soften those lines and to make the hair appear more dense to give it a little bit more volume. Now I'm doing the eyes and in my reference photo uh, the reflection was right in the middle covering most of the most of the pupil and one of the things I like to do is move the reflection slightly to one side so that we can have that contrast between the pupil and the iris and the reflection in the eye. I'm using I, I used uh, I used that black color pencil for some of the darker areas and I used this graphite pencil for much of the shading and it's not a problem if the lines are visible initially because they can all be blended in nicely the only thing that you have to keep in mind is that once you start blending with a q-tip like I'm doing now uh, the blending process will add a little bit of value and make everything a little bit darker. So that's something you need to keep in uh, keep in mind in advance. You have to understand that things are going to get a little bit darker than they originally were. But that's fine. So I'm shading the sides of the face a little bit more to give the face shape and volume. I find that a Q-tip is probably the best blending tool when working with graphite and also with a colored pencil. It doesn't work as well with charcoal but with graphite it works very well. I don't know how much you can see but I actually here I'm using black color, the black colored pencil on top of the graphite pencil, not so much to add value but to add a little bit of texture. And the skin isn't perfectly smooth in my drawing so it has a little bit of texture. I don't know how much of it is, is visible at the moment but hopefully later I will be able to see some of it. So now I'm using a pencil eraser to pull some of the highlights on the hair just to give it a little more structure and 
make uh, these strands a little more and segments a little more defined and here I'm moving on to the other eye so he has fairly long eyelashes and um, fairly light eyebrows and that area around the eyes and the nose is very important to capture correctly if you if you want to capture the likeness of a person this is a slightly older actor uh, he was popular in the 80s and this was a commission portrait I'm just doing some additional shading around the nose and the mouth and I'm just covering some of this area with, with a graphite pencil like I said it doesn't really matter if it doesn't look perfect right now I can just blend it in later now as for the mustache and the beard he does have some gray hairs, white hairs in there. Okay, let me just say a few words about the teeth. Teeth are obviously white, but if you want to make those uh, highlights in the teeth stand out, obviously you have to shade the teeth as well because the, even though they are white, they won't be completely white in our drawing, so they are back behind those in, inside the my, mouth and behind the mustache so obviously there will be a, a little bit of shadow so in order for us for a highlight to stand out everything around it needs to be of darker value so back to what I was talking about drawing a beard and mustache in order for these uh, lighter hairs to stand out I have to put down enough value there and I have to create enough texture inside that beard so first I'm going to make the beard and the mustache a little bit darker and as well as the area around it and then later maybe I can pull a few lighter hairs with my pencil eraser So I'm just trying to add a little bit more texture and value to the area around the nose because he does have a few freckles here and there. I'm mostly happy with the way I done the teeth and the mouth but now I need to work on this beard. I think one of the you can see that I'm I've pulled a few highlights with my pencil eraser to make that beard look a little more realistic and also on the nose the very lightest part of it is on the tip of the nose so one of the things to remember when working with this method with a combination of a graphite pencil and a black color pencil is that the black color pencil will tend to be a lot darker and it can also be a lot it can also be lighter if you don't use a lot of pressure if you use a very small amount of pressure the black color pencil is not too dark that's why you can combine it with combine it with graphite pencils easily but the thing to remember is that when you press a little bit more on that black color pencil it will produce much much darker values and that's why it's important to use these darker values very very sparingly so that you can create a nice range of value which will give your subject uh, volume and depth and make it look realistic like uh, there is a real person popping out of that paper so he had a tuxedo on and I uh, decided to do it a little bit lighter 
and there's the signature. I made the I made his clothes just a little bit lighter. I didn't want it completely black, so that it wouldn't dis be too distracting from the portrait. And this is mostly done. Thank you for watching.